Welcome to the Dizzy Red Panda podcast, a podcast about all the crafting projects that make us dizzy with excitement. This week we have knitting, sewing, and machine knitting. I'm Katie. I'm from Duluth, Minnesota, and I'm known on Ravelry and Instagram as Nerdy in Plaid. And I'm Cheryl outside of St. Paul, Minnesota, on Ravelry as Red and Instagram as Red Knitter. So show notes and links can be found just down below right there. And if you have questions about anything, let us know too. So how was your Halloween? Because I saw some amazing pictures. Yes, it was very nice. Um, we, we all had colds earlier in the week, so I wasn't sure how it was going to go. But we recovered enough to dress up. And I am proud to report, everyone that I did not go overboard with our Halloween costumes. This was my biggest concern going into October. I did not go overboard. Hooray. I am so glad that you took it easy, especially when you were sick. Yes, me too. And I'm glad that we got things done in advance. So we had everything we needed about a week in advance. And I have, I'm not going to lie, I've had a few Halloweens where I have been putting something together very late the night before. So... That didn't happen this year. We had everything we needed. So, and there was very little that was handmade. Like we had attached some ribbons to things. um, And then I made, so my son Everett had a penguin costume, which I had bought secondhand instead of making because I did not go overboard. But I did make a little felt bow tie to go on it because in the jolly holiday scene from Mary Poppins, which is the family ho- costume that we were doing, the penguins are all waiters and they have little bow ties. So he he obviously needed a bow tie added. So that was really my like most handmade touch. Otherwise, my husband and I thrifted some pieces and I got a cardigan in the right color on clearance and it all kind of came together and I think it looked kind of cute. I think you looked adorable. Go to Cheryl's Instagram if you haven't checked it out because she has a couple of family pictures. I'm glad he ended up smiling in the pictures because I know initially he did not like the costume. He did not. There were many tears, much wailing and gnashing of teeth when we originally tried the costume. And we tried it on him a couple times before actual Halloween. But luckily, uh, a snack called Pirate Booty exists, and we bribed him with it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what got the Halloween costume on. That works then. Bribery. Works. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what are you wearing? You look really nice and cozy as well. I am so cozy. Uh, I am I broke out my blanket scarf. So this is just a blanket scarf from Target a couple years ago. <laughs> I have a collection that is too big for my my bin but I'm also wearing underneath my giant blanket scarf I'm wearing a jersey knit dress that I made um from McCall's 6957 I had to look that up because I made it a couple years ago and it's just a basic black dress with three quarter sleeves and an a-line skirt and it's it's nothing fancy the pattern probably not one of my favorite knit dress patterns but it works that's good and it looks like it's a good basic dress up or down exactly I'm all about that (laughs) <laughs> I completely understand that, especially on, we record on Sundays, especially on a Sunday afternoon. So I am also wearing, I am wearing something rather cozy. I can't tell if yes, this you the color is blowing out the camera or what it is. So I'm going to go from sheer white to bright pink today. And there's nothing <laughs> I can do about that. So I apologize. We've had some technical difficulties <laughs> lately. I think that's the understatement, but you know what? It makes us feel like real podcasters. Because if you don't have a technical difficulty every once in a while, who's going to make you humble? Sure. So anyway, so this shawl, which just looks a big, like a big, you know, marigold mass, is actually one of my finished objects for today. Um, This is... And then you turned blue. What is going on with this? I should also let you know that I'm using natural light today and it's pouring out. So... Okay. We're just going to go We're with going it. with it. <laughs> this episode is going to be full of surprises. <laughs> this episode episode brought to you by outdated technology. <laughs> anyway, so this is a shawl that I started way back when. It's called the Unama Shawl by Heidi Ollander. 
It is a huge crescent shaped shawl. I think the color of this is actually blowing up the camera. Um, I think so, so too. it is a marigold <laughs> color. This shawl is a garter stitch crescent shawl. And when I got it, it was a free pattern. I think it's still a free pattern. And there's a bit of lace at the bottom. So here's my lace. I only did two repeats of the lace because I was running out. So let's talk about all the mods. First of all, this shawl was supposed to be knit in fingering weight. I chose worsted. This is the pearled llama in sole in the marigold colorway. It has about 555 yards per skein. So it's nice and squishy. I was running close to running out of yarn on the um, lace section. So I only did two repeats. And then I was also kind of happy that I was running out of yarn because I couldn't do the Pico bind off then. So Pico bind offs They're are so nice. Pretty. They are so pretty, but I was so, so over this shawl and I just wanted it done. Cause I pulled back the lace several times cause I was working on it when I probably shouldn't have been working on it. I didn't have the brain space. So I was over this shawl and I just wanted it done. So doing like a Pico bind off that was going to take another like 20 hours. I know that's a slight exaggeration, but not much. It didn't really appeal to me anyway, but I'm glad it's done and I gave it a really light block and it's nice and squishy and I'm really excited it, for it to go back into kind of my rotation. It looks like something you're going to wear a ton. I think I will. It will go great with black dresses, which I have a lot. Yes, <laughs> that's true. All right. It looks like you finished some things as well. I did finish a couple things. Um, so the first one I have a story for. Excellent. Uh, Is there a yes. picture book to go along with it? Oh, there's not. I'm so sorry. It's not that kind of a story. So Katie and I have both at one time or another participated in this group on Ravelry called the Knitting Harry Potter Knitting and Crochet House Cup. Did I get all the words there? I yeah. I think I got all the words there. And um, this is a giant game with a ton of people participating in it. And there are a lot of different ways to play. But the, the essential idea is that there are prompts for your knitting, which take the form of classes each month. And so you um, knit or crochet or all sorts of other crafts, um, different things that fit in with these prompts. And then you are awarded points for those, which go toward your house winning the house cup or um, there's also some Quidditch being played. It's a it's a super fun thing if you're into um, like ways to sort of gamify your knitting and help you get more done. I think that can be really great if you like Harry Potter culture stuff. There's certainly plenty of that nerdery there. So we have lots of fun with it, um, and we've both sort of gone in and out of of the game over the past two or three years now. I think. I think three years we've been part of it. Yeah, I think three. Yeah. So part of this is that you get sorted, of course, into mm -hmm. different houses. And Katie and I both play for Ravenclaw when we do Go play. <laughs> Sorry, that's as much like house spirit as I have. I love it. <laughs> and then within the larger house, they split people into dorms based on how long you've been playing, at least in Ravenclaw. Each of the houses does this a little bit differently. And so if you've been playing for a couple years, you get to know people pretty well, which mm -hmm. is really neat. And so one of my dormies is getting married very soon, actually, and she wanted to hand knit flowers for her bouquet. And so one of one of our other dormates offered to help. And then it became this whole thing where the whole <laughs> dorm decided to help her with this. So so anyway, um, I have some little flowers to give to her for her bouquet. Maybe I'll just Those are hold, so sweet. Hold one of them up. Yeah. Maybe you put behind something like that. So yeah, they're just little flowers. And she she had actually picked out the yarn and sent some to each of us so that they'll all match oh. in the finished bouquet. And I think she has a few different blues and maybe some cream in there. Um, so she sent this along, um, but I asked her what it was because it's a fun little fingering weight yarn. So this is good for you, spelled E-W-E, -E, mirror ball. If you can see, there's some Stellina in here. Yeah, I can sparkle. see the sparkle a little bit. That's fun. A little bit of sparkle. And the color is Smurfette, which seems appropriate. 
And then um, to make these, she she kind of left it up to us. I think she wanted some flatter flowers. So um, she had linked to a couple patterns she liked, and I chose one of those because I knew then she would like the look of it. So this is called the Flower Corsage Pattern. It's free on Ravelry. And it's really basic. You just knit the petals separately, and then you um, you gather them all together. So there's so much in the middle that you really do need something in the middle and she's going to add vintage buttons to that. So it'll cover up the little hole that you see there. I think that's such a fun detail as well as getting people involved, you know, in your wedding or maybe not, are probably not going to travel or are invited to it as well. That's a sweet, just sentiment. I like that a lot. I do too. Yeah. She, she's having a smaller wedding and um, I think she's trying hard not to get caught up in all the craziness and really focus on a few details that really matter to her. So that's I think that's cool. a great idea. Absolutely. Cause it's one day. The marriage yeah. is the big deal, right? Exactly. Says the person who's not married. I should <laughs> be really clear on that as well. <laughs> I have gone a little ballistic in finishing hats. So course, I'm going to yeah. lead with my, I'm going to lead with my cable hat. So okay. this is something that we saw in the last podcast as a whip. Um, this is hat number five by uh, Kara McKinley. This is out of the federal blue from my color work hat. So this is just the leftovers. And it's a just, it's a free pattern. It's a great pattern for introducing people to cables because cables aren't that hard. When I first did cables, um, I thought they were really, really complicated and they're so hard. I'll never be able to get them. And then as soon as I realized you're just rearranging the stitches before you knit them, it, it's, you know, it's, it's a, really about it's the ability to follow instructions because if you do what the pattern tells you mm -hmm. to, then you'll get the desired result. Like there's really no actual skill involved. You just have to do what it says. Yeah. Can you read the instructions correctly? Yeah. And I think, I think it's something maybe you said or somebody else. I don't remember. I'm sorry. But for as little work as involved in making a cable, you get a huge payout. Like it looks yeah. wonderful. So this hat, I'll go a little closer. So that little bit that's showing up right now, that's actually a one by one cable and you do that without a cable needle. And then there's a three by three cable that you use a cable needle for. So I like that this hat teaches both of, both of those things. And it is a beanie. I did the medium size. The large size goes up to like a 27 inch head. So that was oh. large. I also um, didn't do as many uh, cable repeats because I think this hat gets really, really long otherwise, and I wanted this to fit more as a beanie. So this is going in the gift box. So awesome. Yeah. You also have a cable hat. Okay, yeah. We I'll are so cable. coordinated today. I find this amazing. We really are. It's good that we have something together because, you know, there's a lot that's not together today. <laughs> I think that is a perfect there's a lot that's not together yeah <laughs> okay so my cabled hat is the water hat by Thea Coleman mm -hmm. and this is a pay for pattern it's actually a seven dollar pattern which is more than I would normally pay for a hat pattern I'll be very honest but all of the proceeds from this pattern are going to Flint and helping out with all of their water supply issues. So in that case, I'm okay with paying $7 for a pay for pattern. That's fine with me. And the, um, the body part of this pattern is both charted out and written. So either way you want it, it's there. I'm a chart person. Me too. Just about all the time. Yeah. Every once in a while, I like to double check something against the written instructions, but Mostly I'm a chart person. Mm -hmm. And the decreases at the top are only written, which I found a little bit odd, I guess, since the body hmm. was both. But it's only 14 rounds, so it's really not a huge deal to follow the written instructions for that amount Got of time. It. Wasn't a big deal for me. So this was a stash buster for me. I have a fair amount of leftover nature spun worsted in a bunch of bright colors actually. So this one is China blue and this I had almost a full skein. I used up most of it with this hat, which was really nice to get that out, out of the way. And the cables were just super fun to knit. Like it's I like a fun that, cable. I like that there are a couple of different kinds of cables and then there's the garter bit in there as well, it yeah. looks like. 
Yeah, it's a fun texture. Yeah. So I'm pretty happy with it. And I knit this in one shot. Nice. At, um, I was at a full day home buyer education class for eight hours straight. And of course I was knitting because otherwise I would not be paying attention. So this was my, my way of paying attention. <laughs> and it took about six hours knitting straight through with a few breaks here and there, I guess. So that's how long it takes me to knit a worsted weight cable knit hat. That's Six pretty out. good. Like, that's a pretty quick turnaround right there. I was glad that I brought some socks along, too, because otherwise I would have been without knitting for the last bit. <laughs> Ooh, that would have been rough. Yes. At least on my end, I think. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right. So I have, I went a little bit on a hat bender in the last few weeks. I've only brought some of my hats over. <laughs> I needed more in the last few days as well, but they haven't been blocked, nor do they have pom-poms on them yet. So you're just going to get lots of hats for the next few weeks. Um, right on a so a combination, these hats are a combination of going in my gift box, going to uh, donations, and then also I'm part of a sale at the beginning of December, and I'm kind of nervous about it, and I want to make sure I have enough product, which I know I do. But... <laughs> Anyway, so this is the Snowflake Beanie by so Christina Denae, and it's done out of Bulky. This is out of Knit Picks Simply Wool Bulky, which they think is a bulky, but at 193 yards, I would call that more of an Aaron personal choice. I would agree. I, overall, though, I really liked working with this. Um, this yarn, it was, it's done in all natural colors and they're all named after W's. So I think I used like <laughs> Wendy and Wordsworth <laughs> anyway. So I really liked that. Um, I wasn't, I was trying to practice tension rather than, you know, my floats. So there are a couple of stretches, especially like in here where those floats get really, really long. So I added a white thing, yeah. a stitch just as a way to anchor it. And then this hat is also super small. So I know it looks like it's an adult size hat, but I would say this is a child size hat based on the number of stitches that I cast on and how big it turned out after blocking. Okay. Oh, the other thing about this yarn is that they call this like an eco wool, which means that they're trying to compete with Cascade to uh, Cascade Eco, like the big two or 400 gram skein. Mm -hmm. And... I think it is comparable. I like eco a lot, but um, when I washed this yarn, it was the water turned super dirty and brown. Hmm. So I will probably wash this again. But it, I didn't get anything on my hands as I was knitting it. So, I love but it softened up really nice too. So, yes. So that's one. I also have a series of hats and I'm just going to show you one of these because I think that will work better. Let me see if I've got, here's the card. So I'm calling this series of hats um, my light bright hat. So what I often do is I will grab like a skein or two and I'll just kind of riff on it for a little while. And so I went through my scrap bin and I did that. If, I did that as well. You'll see that. But this is uh, Lana Yavol Magic. And so... It is neon. And like, now your camera is not blowing out. I know. It, I really I like think that is true. neon accurately, <laughs> but not my face. <laughs> anyway, I'm not bitter about that at all today. No, no not at all. Not. not the fact that I looked deathly white. Anyway, so here's the hat. What I did was, so this is a six ply. So that's sport weight, but it isn't actually six plies of yarn. It's a singles, which I didn't know when I bought it. And I don't really like knitting with singles. And so I think I'm trying to like get all of that out of my stash <laughs> right now. So I paired this with some black yarn. I think this is just Dream Baby DK, which is an acrylic. And then I also had some mohair, black mohair. Why do I have mohair in my stash? I don't particularly like knitting with mohair. But it's not too bad when it's mixed with something else. I don't want a sweater out of it. But it adds a nice little fuzziness. And so the it goes through all the colors, which are insanely bright, even mixed with this black. And then, of course, it needed a, an obnoxious black pom-pom. 
So I have a couple baby hats out of this as well, but you can still see the color progression on that one. I think that would be the perfect hat for like a toddler little kid so that you can find them back. Like if they <laughs> run off, you're going to find them. That's a, that's kind of what I was going for with this. Um, so this isn't a definitely an adult sized hat, but I think more little kid hats are going to be in the works with that because also <laughs> I don't have kids as I've mentioned apparently like multiple times on this episode, but I really like putting little kids in super bright, obnoxious colors. Yes. That's just, I don't know why. Uh, the next thing I did was I went through my hand spun and I found a couple of really old skeins of hand spun that I hadn't knit with. So I tend to gift more of my hand spun than knit with it. And I thought, well, to get better at spinning, I probably should knit with it. So this is really early. I would say this is from 2015 or 16 and it's lumpy bumpy. Like, and this is a, definitely a bulky. It. I'm going to go for like an art yarn, a photographer's. Uh, Excellent you know, prop on this one. Cause I've oh, got like sure. big fluffy bits and then I have like little curly cues right there. We'll go with it. And that I just would made be up a the great prop. I think so. Yeah. And the, and I just made up the pattern on these, the rest of these hats. I didn't really follow one. And then I also picked one where I did some thread plying. So I did a white with a lace weight green I just love that. Pass that one on. And of course, I love crazy sized pom poms on hats for little kids. Yes. I kind of, I don't know why, but I do. So those are two of my hand spun hats. The, these other hats that I was working on um, all are, are all from my scrap bin. And so I just paired up some bulky weight hats. I can finish it. I can finish a bulky weight hat in an evening, especially for a kid because they go pretty quickly for me. Yeah. So the first one I did was actually not bulky weight. I pulled out some white mohair and some DK weight, three Irish girls that's left over from a sweater. I'll put the colorway name down below, but so. But it's just so sweet. It's just such a, it's such a sweet little fluffy hat. So I think this one is definitely going in the gift box. So it's light pink variegated, but then it has some pops of browns and then there's some orange and blue so it is quite colorful but it's uh the white uh mohair sorry the mohair tones it down quite a bit as well so yeah i really like this i will probably be doing this again so another kiddo hat the last two hats are out of drops big prints that's what this is. And then it's mixed with some white knit pick, simply wool worsted weight, which is a true worsted weight, similar to Cascade. So I did just a hat with a giant pom pom out of this one. And then I also did, I meant for this to be a kid's hat, but I clearly did not consider gauge. <laughs> so this fits me. <laughs> it's so, cute. I like that brim. I think it's fun um, because then I ran out of yarn. And then I just white the rest of the way. But I'm not going to put a pom-pom on this because not everybody loves pom-poms as much as I do, which I find shocking. That's sad for them. It is really sad for them. Yeah. So yeah, I finished, we're going to go with nine hats because I'm slightly obsessive. You're going to need to take a picture like before you do the sale. If you could, if you could please separate out any gift knit gift box hats that are knit this fall okay and put them in a pile with the ones that you bring to your sale i just want to see like like stacks of that. okay just I, just a pile of them i actually have because some of the stuff i knit last year and i've been adding to it the entire year but i have one of the really really large rubber made totes that's nearly full of stuff and I'm still oh. worried I'm not going to have enough. <laughs> anyway, but that's just me being weirdly paranoid. So <laughs> what are you working on now that I've gone through all of the things that I'm not working on any longer? Okay, maybe I'm just going to start with the smallest thing. Okay. <laughs> on all, all levels. Um, and that's 
a, a few episodes ago, I mentioned big butt pants for my son because we cloth diaper and he has big butt when he's wearing cloth diapers. Um, and I hadn't cut them out yet. And so this is me talking about a thing on the podcast in the hopes that I finish the thing. Because now I've got, these are stacks of um, black, gray, and navy blue pieces that I've cut out for the next size up. Um, I'm doing the 12 to 18 month size big butt pants. And I need to get myself to the sewing machine and actually sew them. It, they do not take long. They it's do not take the long. sitting down and doing it. Yeah, it's my, right now, my only really a window of time to sew is after I get my son down for bed in the evenings and I go to bed very early. So there is not a ton of time between when he goes to bed and when I do. And by then I'm like kind of really tired and lazy and would rather just like sit around knitting or reading. So I need to just get myself to the sewing machine, not for very long and do these so that they're off my list and into his drawer. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, it's finding the time. And you do, so I am a night owl. Cheryl and I are opposite in many ways. Yeah. We also have obviously a lot in common, but I am a night owl. So I will frequently go to bed at like 12 or one. And I know no matter what, what time I text Cheryl at night, you're going to have your phone off. So yeah, because you are more of the 8.39 PM. I tell myself not to text Katie before 6 30 in the morning because I feel that would be rude <laughs> and I'm up well before 6 I know you are <laughs> I am not up well before 6 a.m. <laughs> I am up more closer to 7 30 on a work day yeah <laughs> the more you know I feel like the stars <laughs> go across here okay you can work on that in editing oh yeah totally that will be something I totally can tackle this week you do that <laughs> So for the hand knitting this week, this is something that I just cast on last night. I actually really like brioche and I find it fairly relaxing. Sorry, I just popped several stitches off the needles. So I did the beginning brioche cowl. I just cast this on last night. So, but it's in bulky weight yarn. So anyway, so beginning beginner's brioche cowl by Lavanya Patricella butchered that one. I apologize down here. This is out of Drops Andes, which is a bulky weight alpaca wool blend. And so surprise, surprise, I'm doing gray and blue. <laughs> but it's a bulky weight. It's on size 11s on a 16 inch, which I cast this on twice because I thought, and I knit a little bit because I thought, you know, this doesn't look like this is, it's on a 16 inch needle. It's not very big. But then I remembered brioche when you block it grows quite a bit and so yep. does alpaca so mm -hmm. I think this one's going to be of a normal size person's head <laughs> this is a free pattern and she does a great job of explaining what to do I was a little short on my cast on and I wasn't about to go back and recast on hey you made it yeah I made it I was playing yarn chicken with <laughs> yarn chicken with theory, you know a theme in my life <laughs> so we've got the blue dominant on this side and then of course the gray dominant on the other side. So I really like how this is turning out and I have a few more skeins of this yarn. So it's a really squishy skein and I have a few more skeins of this. And so I think they're going to probably be cowls as well, just because they, yeah. it knits up pretty quickly. And so soft on your neck. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think they would make really good gift cowls as well. Mm -hmm. Great. What else are you working on? Because you have super complex stuff that I'm excited to see. Yeah. Okay. So my other two whips right now are the ones that I've had going for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm still plugging along on those. So I'll show you my Ash V shawl. Oh, sorry for the noise there. I just smacked my needle against. So Ooh. Um, yee, it's getting huge. <laughs> you turned the corner. So you are... That's I so turn pretty. the corner. Yeah, it's kind of. I need to put it into a different bag because it's getting too big for the bag I have it in. <laughs> but yeah, I turn the corner and I've got a couple repeats in um, on the other leg of it. So I need maybe like three and a half more repeats and then the tapering 
right. part of this. So I'm just sort of chugging along on that. And then I'm, I'm realizing just how much I have to fill in on this. <laughs> when it comes time to do that. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But <laughs> consider every row is going to get shorter. Because I'm guessing yeah. it's a decrease every row or every other it, row. It has to be because you pick up stitches. Yeah. Along the inside. So, yes, it'll get shorter. And also, like, this has all of the heavy texturing and right. part following. None of that is particularly difficult, but you do have to pay attention. And I'm constantly scooching my post-it and stuff. Whereas um, there's texture in the middle, but it's really very simple texture. So it should go pretty quickly. Yeah, that will be nice. I think that will be a nice and cozy shawl as well. You know, just in time for actual snow. Yes, I'm all about the cozy as much as possible. <laughs> as much cozy as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I completely understand that. I, yeah. My cat is currently curled up on two blankets. And she <laughs> w crawled into my clean laundry basket yesterday, which I wasn't super pleased about. <laughs> she likes to be cozy as much as I do. <laughs> what I am working on is something cozy for someone else. So... I had this discussion with Cheryl and she confirmed that I might be a little over ambitious for my Christmas knitting because what I originally planned to do was to put kitchen baskets together with, cause my family likes cooking and I had homemade whatever. And that didn't happen. So then I thought, well, I still need to go big or go home on Christmas, <laughs> you know, like two months out and everybody is going to get a blanket. My aunt wanted a blanket. She requested it. So we're working on that. But now I'm like, well, my brother and his girlfriend definitely deserve a blanket. My parents each should have a blanket because they don't have a couch. And then, and then my partner's son, he always likes to curl up like he burritos himself in a blanket while he plays video games or is watching TV. And so he absolutely deserves a blanket. I'm like, yes. what are you thinking? All done in the next six weeks. Okay. To to be fair, they do all deserve blankets. True. You are not wrong about that. They They are blanket worthy. Everyone <laughs> deserves a blanket. You're right about that. Okay. I don't want to discount that part of this. Okay. Thank you. Go on. But now it's time for me to prioritize because depending on whose blankets I get done. So I have this yarn. So I, and I should say, I am not hand knitting these blankets. I'm not that stupid. Let's <laughs> be realistic. I don't like hand knitting blankets. I do not enjoy it much less like five in time for Christmas. It's just not going to happen. So I'm machine knitting all these blankets. That's why I thought I could do it. So one afternoon I went over to um, the shop. So I, essentially rent a machine like machine time from my local yarn shop on their brother kh <laughs> bulky machine I don't know the numbers <laughs> like something like that and so I I'm doing all of worsted weight blankets because I have a crazy amount of worsted weight yarn so this is one strip that I did and it's about a foot wide stretched out. It's all curly on the edges because I haven't joined it. And this colorful bit is the waist yarn. So I was, I was just, just putting my strips together. So I have three of these strips and this is called, it's a marl, which I thought would work well for my brother because he has a black cat and it's <laughs> acrylic yarn. And this is Sirdar Hayfield Bonus Erin with Tweed in the color Magpie. It's a color that is now discontinued, which I'm kind of sad about. Um, because I've, I have two skeins of this that I'm going to turn into the blanket. And you might be thinking, Katie, two skeins does not equal a blanket. Well, each of these skeins is 400 grams. So they have about 900 <laughs> yards in them. And so then you might also say, Katie, that's two giant skeins of 1800 yards. That should be a blanket already. So yes. So I have three of these strips and I'm going to join them together with a black edging or a black edging and then do a black around the outside but these strips are about 250 grams I have three of them so far and they're like over six oh feet long they're super long because my theory is he's tall and when you're cuddling on a couch with two girlfriends sorry 
two cats and your girlfriend, then there has Sorry, to be brother. a funny along. Sorry about that. He's never going to watch this. Let's be realistic. And he's incredibly knitworthy. He wears like the hats that I knit him year round. So anyway, so to show you how big this skein is, I'm actually going to just drop in a picture here. And so you can see how awesome. obnoxiously large it is when it was caked. It. I had to cake it because that's the easiest way for the machine. It tensions it better for the machine. So that's what I'm working on. Mm. We're going to see some more blankets soon. Hopefully, hopefully crossing fingers. Okay. Well, we'll what's get... your big crazy project? <laughs> Way to call me out. I will do my best. <laughs> uh, we'll keep everyone in suspense with our crazy projects, right? That's how we, that's how we keep the actual back. extent of our crazy. Oh, yeah. we have rain and wintry mix right now. Oh, you got what Super. we have. Yeah. yeah. It's still happening. Great. Enjoy that. It's been there all day. Super. I can't wait to drive tomorrow in black mm -hmm. ice. Should be great. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> okay. I don't know how to segue from that, so I'm just going to show you my knitting. <laughs> <laughs> I love that snowflake. Yeah. That, yeah. that particular one. Okay, so um, we mentioned that we had a glitch, and that was that we we sort of lost an episode, and so it's now been three weeks since we last recorded, and I managed to get two charts done in three weeks. So that puts you I ahead of the game. Awesome. That puts me ahead of the game. Although, like now we're adjusting our schedule, and yeah, you know, so really I'm caught up with the game, but ahead of the previous game. So one chart is this giant snowflake which i love i think it's gorgeous That's and then there are these like i don't know are they flowers are they little blubs i'm not really sure but they're pretty <laughs> so when in doubt call them a snowflake <laughs> sure it's probably a snowflake there are a lot of snowflakes on this thing i when so. i would like you to count at the, when you're finished with this how many snowflakes there are on that the question is do i count both sides because this is oh, knit I in the different brown. types of snowflakes, not different individual snowflakes. Okay. Because if you really wanted to show the crazy, then count individual snowflakes. Yeah. You know, some people like to calculate the number of stitches in a knitting project so they can determine how far along they are. Mm -mm. Mm -mm, especially not with something like this. That's no, I've, I, I agree with you because I've learned that while I like to time myself and many other things, knitting is not one of those because if I have to rip back, I know how long, how many more hours I have to go to. It's not a good system for me. Yeah, no, that just makes me sad. Although I did calculate out um, percentages of like how many rows equals what percent. Got it. Mostly so that I can keep my Ravelry status bar up to date. <laughs> Let's be real honest here. So I am now past 80% on this project. Which oh, is that's really good. For me. Yeah. So I, I think that I'm in pretty good shape to finish this by Christmas. I think you are. That's going to be stunning for Christmas too. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's all I'm working on and that's all you're working on. Mm -hmm. You also say that you've been doing a lot of binge knitting lately. I would say that I have as well. Yeah, we've been binge knitting, and so I thought, I don't know, I thought maybe that might be something to chat about, like, what is healthy binge knitting? <laughs> is, there, is there such a thing? I'm not sure. So is uh, I think we've had different kinds. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've had different kinds of binge knitting, though. Okay, so, so go ahead and talk about yours, and I'll chime in. Okay, so I've had two different days within the last week and a half. I think, where I've been able to knit like basically all day, which I used to do quite frequently before I had a child who took Needs attention. Care. Yeah. Yeah. I love him dearly, but he has cut into my knitting time. And so I used to do this all the time and I just don't very much anymore. But I had, I had that home, home buyer education class that was eight hours long that I definitely needed knitting for. Yeah. And so I knit pretty much that whole time. And then I had a retreat for work that was like meetings all all day long. Uh, and I work remotely, so it was all on Skype, you know, sitting with headphones kind of thing. Right. Uh, and so I knit all day during that because there again, in both cases, it would be very difficult for me to focus for 
that long right. and I start daydreaming, I'm much less likely to daydream if I am knitting at the same time that I'm trying to listen to something. I, and, that kind of, and I think a lot of people don't understand that about knitting, but that's a whole nother thing. I agree. I think as knitters, we know that, but it gets perceived in many other ways. Yeah, I think that might be an interesting topic for later on. especially. We'll tuck that one away. Um, so I had two different experiences with my binge knitting. So for the home buyer education class, I really wanted to finish this hat because I'm sending it away and I needed to get it finished so that I could put it in the mail. And so I thought, I'm just, I'm just going to bring the hat and I'm going to work on that. And I had my backup socks because I was worried it wasn't enough. And sure enough, it wasn't enough. <laughs> but I, I just went through on the hat, same pattern, same needle, same yarn the whole right. time. And I did feel like I needed to stretch a few times and I needed to set it down a few times because my hands were bothering me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, at my work retreat on Friday, I decided to have two projects with me. One was the Ashby shawl, which is on, that's a worsted weight. So it's on maybe, I think it's on like size nine needles. I'd have okay. to check. Um, but like, you know, a sort of larger medium. size needles. Yeah. Yeah. And then the crazy Scandinavian, which like, it looks like it takes a ton of concentration. I don't feel that way about it. So it was I think you're experienced enough in color work yeah. that you know where you need to pay attention. And for example, like I'm not experienced enough in color work, so I would not be able to do that. Yeah. And it, it doesn't really bother me. I wouldn't bring it to something um, like if this retreat had been in person, I would not have brought it because I can't maintain eye contact. And that's one thing that I try to do when I bring knitting to something where I'm not amongst my kind and people know <laughs> that I'm paying attention. I try to bring something where I can maintain eye contact. But again, whole nother thing. So that was, I had those two projects and our day was split up into multiple meetings of between half an hour to an hour and a half in length. Oh, and okay. so I decided that every time we switched to a different meeting, we would have about a five minute break at least in between. Right. And so every time we switched meetings, I would switch projects. And so I went back and forth between my two projects all day. And um, the whole thing, I mean, we had, you know, lunch breaks and stuff in there, but it was still probably six, six and a half hours, something like that of knitting time. And my hands felt great. I That's didn't good. have any sort of fatigue from it at all I felt like I could have just kept on going so that was just something I was thinking about is that like having that that big difference in needle size can go a long way towards helping you get um keep going for longer if you're in a position where you can do so and that might be something to consider going into this holiday season yeah. if you're deadline hitting so that you can um get a lot done without hurting yourself I think that's that a really good point Absolutely. Because I knit this hat essentially all in one sitting. And one thing I noticed was once I was done with this color work section, so this was done on like size 10 needles. And once I was done with this color work section, my hands were cramping up a bit. And I do suffer from carpal tunnel. So I'm always pretty careful about it. And I take time to stretch. But I think you're right. I think it's really important to switch needle size, which I hadn't thought of. I often switch hands when I'm knitting. Oh, so really? I, um, so if I'm working on one color knitting, I can, I naturally knit continental. So I hold my yarn in my left hand, but when I can start to feel myself get tired, I will actually switch and become an English knitter. And I don't have too much difference in my tension at all. And so that works really well. I don't like purling English style because I purl in a really weird way anyway. I have yet to figure out purling English style, to be honest. I've tried, and it just doesn't happen for me. And I, and that's okay. So I think, like, I switch, but I think the reason that I got, had problems with this was I was already using both hands, and so yeah. I couldn't make my switch. So that's something I'm a little bit more conscious of, but I hadn't thought of, like, adjusting my needle size as well. I, I mean, right now I'm going between, especially with gift knitting, well – roughly because I'm machine knitting my stuff but I'm going between worsted and bulky uh the closer we get to the holiday <laughs> the less likely I am going to be to use fingering weight or sport weight 
Let's be real. Like, it's not going to happen. The holidays so, get closer and the yarn gets thicker. You know, and I've noticed that, like, in how people say, you know, do you still have a holiday knitting? And, like, the promotions that come out from yarn stores as, like, they get s- slowly, like, the yarn gets thicker and thicker <laughs> thick, and thicker. Yeah. Like, suddenly it's, like, a week before and, like, now we have arm knitting. <laughs> <laughs> Which will only take you 30 minutes. <laughs> Which, yep. I, yeah. I do tend to do quite a bit of binge knitting, though because I will watch podcasts like in a grouping or I will listen to an audio book for an evening in an evening or anytime I'm watching TV, frankly, um, I have to have knitting cause I can't just sit there. So I do quite a bit of binge knitting, but I'd usually choose a different project each night. Mm. And that's how I go. But I think I might have to consider switching projects themselves just to see how that works. I've never been that intentional about doing it. I've certainly, um, you know, if I would have like a whole day to knit before, I would maybe do, you know, in the morning I do one in the afternoon Mm -hmm. another. But going back and forth like this really worked for me. And that could work with episodes of a TV show or a movie or whatever too. Well, and it keeps keeps your brain fresh as well, Mm -hmm. especially if you're working on something that's patterned or slightly complicated you know, you can kind of get in a rhythm and sometimes that rhythm is not good. And so you have to end up ripping back. And so I think you're right. I think that might work really well if you're doing cables, like going through two cable repeats. I usually will set a a, a goal of, I will get through X number of repeats and then stop and go do something else. So that tends to work for me, but needle size, that's not going to say I'm going to start knitting a pair of socks right now. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah. Binge worthy knitting. So I would I want to know if anybody else does binge knitting, and in what context oh. they do it is. Oh, I know you do. So tell us, <laughs> fill us in. Are there any tips and tricks that you have for making sure that you're able to keep your hands in good shape? There was a really easy out for some very dirty humor, and I'm proud to say that I didn't take it. Oh, good job. Look at me having a filter today. <laughs> well, filter for my mouth, not my, for my face. Clearly. Uh, no, we can't fix that. <laughs> no, we can't fix that. So, and let us know how you binge because we would like to know that as well. Binge on your knitting specifically. I mean, if you're watching something, I'm interested in that too. Oh, absolutely. I'm looking for Always. things to add to my Netflix queue right now. See, a, see you in a couple of weeks. Hopefully it will only be two weeks this time. That's what we're shooting for. Exactly. (laughs) Bye. Bye.